What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Another Jerry Corner. I'm your host, Pablo. Joining me, as always, is Mr. Byron Schultz. Brian, Superman. You sent me the show notes, and you said Superman rumored plot. I had no idea what you were talking about. I, I figured I'd say, let Brian explain it to me. Give me all the details before I can give you my thoughts. So this is going to be a live well, not live when you get it, but it'll be, <laughs> you know, it'll be, this is my, my honest reaction to whatever this rumored plot is. Ryan, go for it. All right, so this popped up in the last 24 hours, although some of the seeds of this actually have come out before, albeit from unreliable sources. So take this with large grains of salt, but it's the first time we've seen sort of a contiguous story put to this movie and it comes from, uh, of course, the, the internet, which is never wrong. Uh, a scoop called Re Rejected Scooper. But anyway, here we go. Quote, other superheroes are edgy and kill when necessary. Superman is an outcast among them for his optimism and no kill rule, and ultimately tries to inspire them to change their ways. Lex Luthor is war profiteering on an armed conflict in a foreign nation. Superman intervenes in the conflict. The US government deploys a clone created by Luthor dubbed Ultraman to stop him. Ultraman ultimately deteriorates into Bizarro and goes rogue. Superman and his super friends must stop him while Lois and the Daily Planet work to expose Luther for his crimes. The movie reportedly ends with, Lo with Superman revealing his identity to Lo Lois, Luther avoiding repercussions and running for president, Supergirl's arrival on Earth, and other DCU setups like the engineer being recruited into the authority. I mean, all I can say is let's see if we can pull it off, right? That's all I can really say. I mean, he's, I, to me, Brian, this is a comic book fan given the opportunity to, to, for his dream project. And he's pulling out all the stops. He's trying to make Superman matter again. In terms of his popularity, Brian. Uh, and who he is. So, because that's not necessarily been destroyed, but has has been tarnished somewhat, right? So, and is representative of what's going on in the world today, I guess. So, what are your thoughts on it? All right, so let's go through why maybe some of the themes why this could be at least in the ballpark. So, number one is given that we get set photos seemingly every five minutes. An Ultraman type character is one of the characters that has been filmed in a scene where Superman has been arrested. Yes. So that is out there. There's Superman in handcuffs and there's a black costume figure with a U on his chest walking behind him. And I think there's even a shot of them fighting where Ultraman is subduing Superman. So there is that which does fit this. The other thing thematically, or the other thing content-wise that works is this type of story gives James Gunn the excuse to have a lot of characters without those characters having necessarily a lot to do. If you say a whole bunch of superheroes are willing to kill and do things one way, but Superman stands out, well, then those other guys, are, or you don't have to spend a lot of time with it. They could just be in a room. They could be at a council. They could, you know what I mean? Like it could be on, on screen for five seconds. And, you, and, it, and all of us fans would be like, look, there's that. But that person doesn't take away from the narrative. So um, the way the, way the uh, ex, the Avengers show up in X. Exactly. I was like, yeah. Exactly. Right. It, it, this is a type of story that would give him the excuse to create that world. Obviously, they're, you know, at the end of this, they're definitely trying to connect like, Supergirl and the Woman of Tomorrow. We know the engineer is in this, so obviously we know there's a connection to the authority. Um, look, I mean, it, it does check out in some level. And then you get, you know, the, the sort of all-American Superman who doesn't kill and who's, who's... And that would fit the... where they I think the official tagline about him struggling with his heritage, right? And sort of the values that he was raised in Smallville with. And here it is, the optimism and trying to do good and trying to actually even change the ways of, of people. Now... Well, let me stop there. That idea, just the concept of it. Superman somewhat established, Mr. Positive, Mr. Do Good. That's somewhat of the classic Superman, but not only trying to save the day, but actually trying to 
change how other heroes and maybe even how other villains look at their lives. Almost a Superman as therapist? I don't know what the right word is. What do, you, what do you think about that? Like that almost seems like one step further than Superman as inspiration, which is what I would argue Christopher Reeve embodies. It's possible, right? Because if you think about it, he is Tony. He is an alien and he is... And perhaps given the knowledge he already possesses, Brian, he has a certain philosophy, certain perspective that might not, not necessarily change superheroes, but perhaps as much as it for us, right? So I'm for it. Now, thematically, the one other reason why this could be realistic is there is there's a big whiff of Kingdom Come story in this. And we know he's obviously wearing the Kingdom Come type costume. We know that Kingdom Come was one of the stories that James Gunn cited as his inspiration. This is a modified version of it, but Kingdom Come featured a group of heroes who were much closer to murderous vigilantes. It featured them going too far, which forced Superman to come out of retirement and effectively recruit some of the original Justice League members after 10 years on the sideline to try and re-inspire and be heroes the right way. It included Superman forming a prison where he captured both villains and heroes that were doing things the wrong way and then attempted to change their ways. He literally would sit down with them in the prison and try to convince them. So that actually has happened in the comics before. It did involve a conflict with a foreign power being the ca one of the catalysts for how it should be dealt with. Right. And it, it did involve Lex Luthor corrupting and creating in that story it was captain marvel he corrupted captain marvel and turned him against superman as the superman level hero that could stop him and then superman winds up having to turn marvel back to the good side to kind of save the world from nuclear war but in this case it looks like maybe ultraman has taken the place of, of captain marvel if you believe this now the, the big empty piece of kingdom come that's not in here is batman so batman is a massive character in that story because he resents superman for quitting and so he forms the outsiders which are like green air a lot of the heroes that sort of have more questionable morals so mm -hmm. team up with batman and over the course of the story they at one point almost look like terrorists but at the end of the day they look like heroes um and batman and superman have a have a heart to heart and a face to face where batman kind of you know the moral side of him wins out so obviously there's no batman in this story and i don't know who's playing that role but there definitely is an aspect of kingdom come that is in this rumored plot line Right. You can see it like they borrowed some of those elements to try to create this idea of Superman as ideal and then trying to re-inspire, reinvigorate and reinvent kind of the, the what it means to be a superhero and how to dispense with justice. So if we were to believe that there is that, too. So I, it doesn't put me off the movie. I mean, it's different. That's all it needs to be. Right. Yeah. It needs to be different, but good. I have one, so if we, again, if we're just assuming this is true, and who knows, but I would like to see if he reveals his identity to Lois, that Lois already knows it and has protected it, the whole movie. I think that would be a credit to Lois. And if we're trying to set her up as this ace reporter, sort of, you know, keen eye. So, I mean, it, that, was, that, was, that was always, that has always been the argument, right? It'd be a much, I think it'd be a more poignant moment if Clark tells her and she basically has already known. Yeah. That, you know, so. What are you looking, I mean, obviously you're looking for some chemistry. Is it the sort of chemistry that Margot could have had with Christopher Reeve or the same non-existent? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not a strong suit yeah. to me of that. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, maybe it's sacrilegious to say, but to me, Margot Kidder didn't really inhabit Lois Lane in all the ways. There's some, there's some scenes where I think she is I like her channeling. The first one. Yeah, the reporter side, like the intrepid reporter where she's fearless, like that part, I think she channels well. There's definitely some histrionics and stuff that she does where I'm kind of like, I don't know if that's what I imagine at Lois to be, let alone be like the love of Superman's life. But the Lois in the animated is the best Lois right now to me. I, I don't mm -hmm. think any of the live action Loises have really nailed it. Like Kate Bosworth, that was not happening. Although, <laughs> I don't know if I told you this, I saw, I saw Superman Returns opening weekend with Kate Bosworth's family sitting next to me. Oh, word? Did you see? Did you see? On, so I did it, but the guy I was with did. Oh, what did he say? He's like, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. He, he was not a fan of the performance coming out of the movie. And like, yeah, that, that didn't go over well with, uh, with her, her partisan crowd. So. 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> anyway, so I don't think she got there. Amy Adams is fine, but I don't, I, you know, considering how good an actress she was, I, I don't think that made it either. I don't think she and Cavill really like lit up the screen. Uh, they tried with a few scenes, but no. I don't think it got there. You know, I don't think it got there. Yeah. And then in the TV side, like, you know, you've had like Terry Hatcher and Dean Kane. That's kind of a more silly version. Erica Durant and Tom Welling. Like, I don't, it, it just, and now you have the one where they're married and Superman and Lois. I just don't think we've had it in live action. Yeah, we have, we have, we have. It's the animated one. She's the one that's, that the way they play that character where she will kind of, you know, she'll kind of give him tough love. That's the one that I think is the closest when she does know who he is, you know, but so that's what I'm hoping we get almost a little bit of that where like she's got an edge to her and the soft side. And if she does know the whole time and it makes her more heroic for what she does. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly that's going to play a big part because we got to get that twilight meaning coming in, right? For the, for, the, for those people who like that, that sort of uh, romance or whatever. But I agree with you. We've seen Nicholas Holt on in these set photos with his bald cap and some some damage from some battling or whatever he's doing. But I agree with you. I would I want the triangle. I think if the, if, if Gunn is wants to make this different and fun, like he have has Nicholas to Holt, sort of have Nicholas Holt be you know have a little have a little Magneto to him and uh, you know be be kind of seductive toward Lois. He has to be able to charm her and charm the audience, Brian. Yes. Us knowing what he is, but he's able to, he has to have a way about him that despite him being who he is, we're there to listen to what he got to say. The classic storyline of Lex running for and becoming president. I mean, (laughs) it's funny to say in today's society what running (laughs) for becoming president looks like, but in the classic sense, (laughs) If you think about the other portrayals we've had, I don't know that any of them was presidential. Like Hackman was hamming it. Great he's actor, big, but he was hamming it up, right? Yeah, like yeah, if you yeah. even though he went to the White House, that he's, doesn't he wasn't exactly, you know, in the White House doing presidential things. Spacey was just channeling Hackman, like his version of it. And then come on, Jesse Eisenberg, nobody's voting for that guy. So that's what I mean. Like, if Nicholas Holt is going to end this movie running for president, <laughs> I think he has to do so in a way where you're like, dude, that guy's that guy's going to win like 38 states and win like yes. 400 electoral votes if we don't stop him. Like that kind of deal. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, Not what yeah. we got in real life. <laughs> no further comment. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, um, but. Uh... Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of this uh, story. I mean, Brian, James Gunn is, I think, knowledgeable enough. And just like us, Brian, when we think about storylines and possibilities and stuff like that, if we had the money and, you know, the, the opportunity to do something like this, this is, this, this is a, I guess, the, the way we would go about it. Yeah. Right. So he's given us his inspirations, which is uh, Superman All Star, and uh, he's pulling, he's pulling, and and I guess Brian, Brian, is, 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 did he have so much to say regarding Endgame and Infinity War, Brian? Did he have? Was was I'd love to hear or to know what were his notes, Brian? I want that notebook. I mean, he he was on every project after he joined. I think for this one, my biggest, in some ways, one of my bigger concerns for Gunn would just be, be careful of the too many ideas because he knows so much and he loves this character in this world so much. And there is that pressure, right? Of like, this is the movie that has to work on its own and launch it all at the same time in two and a half hours or less. Just be careful not to, have too many ideas in the final cut when i see the characters and i see all these shots that's the other thing i would caution people is like you don't know if all these scenes are going to even make it in the movie like you know a movie like this they're going to shoot double probably what you actually see so some of these cameos some of these interactions some of these little things we're getting out of cleveland or wherever they've been shooting like some of it's not going to be there when we when you see the movie some of it will but some of it won't so i would just caution james gunn like less is more i think when it comes to this yeah and then i hope Somebody's reining him in, right? 
That's just Kingdom really Come cool. is a great story. I mean, Kingdom Come is a is a classic story and a great story yeah. and a fun I read, one. And, yeah, and yet, I, read, I read the novel. Yeah, and it's and it, and it is interesting to do it without Batman because he's so central to it. But you know, obviously, we know there is a, a DCU Batman coming at some point. So, um, so yeah, no, I think I think this can work. Could if this is right again, where this is pure speculation. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a totally off it. But James Gunn has not also come out and done the let me clip this tweet and say no because he yeah, does do yeah, that yeah. on occasion too. Yeah, and he yeah, hasn't done yeah, that yeah. yet. So <laughs> I don't know if he can. And that because then he if if what is being said does come out to be true, then we can't really rely on what he says ever again. <laughs> true, <laughs> like, that's you know fair. What I'm saying? That's fair. So. He's gonna, he's gonna, if he chooses to be quiet, then let it be what it be. We'll see it when it comes out. Uh, but yeah, let us know in the comments section below what you guys think, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes on!